So Linda Codega put out a call on Twitter asking us to articulate what Plan A and Plan B is with regard to the OGL, given that Wizards right now has continued to refuse to accept that OGL 1.0A is in fact irrevocable and cannot be deauthorized. So I want to articulate exactly this strategy and also to show you what allies we have coming in the fight that are not going to stand for what Wizards is trying to do. So I put out a Twitter thread and so if you're on Twitter I did pin this to my profile I'd really appreciate your liking this tweet and then also retweeting it in order to get greater visibility within the community all right so here I go I say I will articulate plan a and B and the potential allies we have in this legal battle who have trillions at stake if Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro do not give up on their assault on the very foundations of open licensing because this goes so much further than Dungeons and Dragons in the tabletop community and so I have asked Linda to help us get the word out here. So here's what I say. OGL 1.0a cannot be deauthorized. That has no legal meaning and is gobbledygook, according to Bob Tarantino, an entertainment law attorney who is a specialist in exactly the OGL license. We've talked to him on this channel before. The relevant part of my interview with Bob is here, and I posted a link to the exact clip where this is discussed. I say this goes back to far before the OGL because the OGL itself is rooted in open licenses that have been used for software decades before the OGL was formed. As people on the software side have pointed out, these are established principles that have been battle tested in court. And I know there have been a lot of people on the software side of open licensing that have been saying, we have figured this out. This is the way things are. We understand what open licenses are. We have been to court. These things are have stood up. These things are battle tested. And so to have Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro all of a sudden level this assault at open licensing, all the people in the software you know, are talking to me in the comments saying, we already know how this goes. You're not paying enough attention to the software side of things because because we know exactly what the situation is with open licenses are. And for some reason, Wizards and Hasbro have this crazy off-the-wall interpretation which cannot be allowed to stand. I say that Wizards and Hasbro are trying to establish a precedent that open licenses can simply be deauthorized on a whim. If this were true, then there are companies out there who created openly licensed software who now have that software running on what could potentially be every computer on the planet. I'm sure that now that they have benefited from an open license to so widely distribute this, their software that they would like to just oh, deauthorize that license and now demand royalties from everyone running their software. That won't work and isn't legal. Legal specialists in open licensing may also be taking notice soon of what Wizards and Hasbro are trying to do. They simply cannot allow that to happen. If Hasbro's attack on open licensing is allowed to stand, it has huge ramifications on the software that effectively runs the world. You think this whole situation about potentially deauthorizing the OGL has just absolutely created chaos and tumult in the tabletop gaming community? Well, you just wait until somebody like Apple or Oracle or Google or something like that all of a sudden tries to pull back open licensing or someone tries to pull back openly licensed software by deauthorizing a license that a bunch of stuff that Apple or Google or Oracle runs on? Oh, you just wait. That would be some extreme chaos. That's why this cannot be allowed to stand. I spoke with Bob Tarantino on exactly this subject, the ramifications on software open licensing because of the open licensing situation that we're experiencing here with Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. Here's the relevant part of the interview where we talk about the legal reasoning, and I provided a link to the clip where I talk about with Bob Tarantino about exactly this. So plan A is still to get Wizards and Hasbro to back down from this attack on the foundations of open licensing. Plan B is the legal defense that Paizo said it was willing to undertake if necessary when it announced the ORC. That's the new open license that Paizo is working on with a bunch of other publishers. 1,500 publishers are already working with ORC, so Wizards is already a pariah within the gaming industry. I mean, nobody wants to work with them. Wizards has absolutely ostracized itself with this. And once big tech notices this assault on open licensing, Hasbro itself is going to become a pariah among corporations. And of course, it is publicly traded. I don't think that they want that to happen, and I would assume that Hasbro does not want it to become increasingly known in investment communities that they are involved in such an attack on open licensing and now involved in an extremely deep-seated licensing dispute so close to the release of the new D&D movie that they want to turn into a major franchise. Stock prices, investment money, etc. are all at risk. 
So I propose a mutual defense pact among all tabletop publishers similar to Article 5 of the NATO Treaty for Common Defense. We shall call it the Tabletop Hostilities Alert Cooperative Organization, or the THACO Treaty. And this was named by Soda Saint Commentaries on my live stream, and I provide the link. Its Article 5 is that any legal action taken against one publisher by Wizards or Hasbro regarding the OGL 1.0a is regarded as an attack on us all. We all commit to mutual aid and support to fight it until such time as our natural big tech allies come in with lots of money to defeat this and it becomes a much bigger problem for Hasbro's executives and stockholders. We're holding Gondor here, people. We cannot give up because of what this means for everything that open licensing is. Is. We cannot stand for this attack on open licensing. There's way too much at risk, far more than just the Dungeons & Dragons brand. So we are holding Gondor here, and we are waiting for the Rohirrim to get here, and in this case, the Rohirrim is everybody in open licensing software and big tech who has extreme vested interests to make sure that exactly what Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast is trying to do here is defeated and stopped here.